So first question on the quiz is just like that. Second thought. First thought on the quiz, graph the line. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure we need a straight edge. Something to draw your line with. I do card, you know, credit card, whatever. So let me draw a straight line connected to it here. So graph is able to follow the linear equation. So you can multiply. Mm -hmm. When you graph linear equations, Plus spot and label at least two points. So you can have more, but at least two. And then draw your line. So it doesn't matter to me how you get your points as long as this is the work. Now, for your own benefit, the best way you can get your points is to order pairs. Is to use the next question as a hit. Put it in slope intercept form. If you put it in slope intercept form, that tells you without plugging numbers in, it tells you how to get one point and then how to find the other one by using the slope. What you want to do is you want to rewrite in slope intercept form. We do get y by itself, put everything else on the other side, like with the next plus two. So have a positive 3x. So to undo a positive 3x, you have to subtract 3x from both sides. Now have positive four y on the left equal to, and again you have the x and then you have the constant. So you want your x term to go first, so it's a negative three x, and that's a positive point, so it's plus twenty. Now it is the same thing as. 20 minus 3x. That's the same thing. But remember, you're trying to match things up with mx plus b. And students will take this literally. You wrote 20 minus 3x in this order. And then you'll do the next step and you divide by 4. But because it's in this order, the first thing you see is going to be what you see the slope is because you see the first thing you come across. It's a common mistake that I'll see all the time. And the way you alleviate it is remember this is the x term, and that's the term without an x, a constant. So this is your x term, it should be first. So it's a negative 3x, and the other term will be positive 20. Order helps you, you know, match things up. So now you want to divide each term. Everybody just divide by four. Because you want one y. Solve for one y. Over here, negative three over four is negative three fourths times x. And then plus. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So here's what we just said. Matching it up with y equals mx plus b. The lineup, the 
smoke. The coefficient in terms of x is negative three over four. And the y intercept is five. The first thing you want to plot is the y intercept. The first thing you want to plot the label is your y intercept. So the y intercept is on the y axis. One, two, three, four, five. Now remember what I told you last week. You have to plot and label. You got to label your point. If it's on an axis, if it's on the x axis or on the y axis, you only have to label it with one point. You can label it with an ordered pair, but I get I get students that'll mix it up. This point right here has an ordered pair. X is zero and y is five. That's the ordered pair. X is zero left and right and then five up. But I get students that will do this all the time. Five zero. That's not five zero. Five zero is over here. So if you label it incorrectly, you'll lose the point. So here's what I told you last week. If you're on the x-axis or on the y-axis, I'm perfectly fine to just label it like you're labeling the number line. Label it with just five. If it's on the axis, just get away with labeling the five. Because when you're on number line, you don't, you're not going to have work there, you're just labeling the number. If you're in a quadrant, then I want I plot the secret point. So there's one point. That's where you're going to start from. Then we count the slope, the rise of the right. Now I wrote this slope like this for a reason. Because I want to point out to you, you know, going back to last week, the word negative three over four is exactly the same. That's negative three divided by positive four. It's also the same as positive three divided by negative four. It doesn't matter where the negative is, out in front of your fraction, in the numerator, or in the denominator. If there's one negative, the whole fraction is negative. Okay. And over here, when I first had the problem, it was negative three, and then I divided by positive four, and then going into negative four. Because a negative divided by positive is a negative. This is what, you know, I do it every single time, that way I'm consistent. When I have a negative slope, I put my negative in the numerator. I put my, I just put it in the numerator. I will write this right. This is negative three over a positive four. That's how I write. That's how I'm going to work. Because your first move from here lies over run. So your first move is the rock. So you're either going to go up or you're going to go down. Okay. Because I put the negative in the numerator, my rise is down three. So from here, I go down one, two, three. When I put the negative in the numerator all the time, that means my denominator is going to be the positive one every single time. So whether I have a positive slope, let's say I have a positive slope for five thirds, that means I'm going to go up and then I'm going to go right. I'm going to go up five and then I'm going to go right three. So when I have that slope over there of negative three over four, I put the negative up here. I'm going to go down instead. I'm going to go down three, but then I'm going to go right four. That means what I'm thinking about trying to plot this. My numerator is the only sign I'm going to change. So I'm either going to go up first or down first, depending on the positive, I go up. If it's negative, I go down. My denominator, I'm always going to have a positive down. So I'm either going to go up and to the right, 
because my denominator will always be positive. Or I'm going to go down and to the right because my denominator will always be positive. That way, I'm just always going to go to the right when I go left to right. I just try to be consistent. Pick a method that works and stick with it. That doesn't mean this one will work. Go up, right, and left. Hand. That will work. It will be on the line. Down three, and then right one, two, three, four. The next point on the line is right there. The slope is direction from one point to the next point. It tells you how to get there. Go down three blocks, and then turn right and go over four blocks. You have to label it. Plot and label at these two points. When it's in a quadrant, this is quadrant one. You have to label it with its ordered pair. So that means parentheses and a comma in between. So you're going to label it with the address. You're not going to label it with the slope. The slope is how you got there. It's not the address of, of what you're at. And if I told you how to get to my house, I would say, all right, go you know, eight miles down 99, get on the one, uh, 180, and go east. And then get off on Chestnut and go north. That's not what you're going to label right there. That, you know, that's not my address. My address is an order pair. You know, GPS, order pair. There'll be three of them. The address is just what's this X right here? Four. And then up, what's this Y? There's my two points. You now take the straight edge. Very nice and neatly on your graph and the grid. Draw a straight line and don't forget to put arrows on it because lines go in different directions for arrows. But let me point out when you work. If I had used the slope. And instead, you three over negative four, you put the negative down below, then the rise is positive three. So I would have gone up to one, two, three, which is off the grid. And then it's a negative down below. So I have to go to the left. Negative is down or left. Positive is up or up. So I put the left for you. So one, two, three, four. And that point, using the direction, is still on the line. The ordered pair right here. What's this X right here? Negative four. I went four to the left. I was at zero for x, and I went four to the left. And, that's four. and then I was at five, and I went up three. So what's the y up here? And that's the point it's going to. And you can even go here. Down three more. One, two, three. Over one, two, three, four. That point is also on the It's like a staircase. 
it may change the same slope every single time through those two points. So here's a nice point. So this right here, since this is seven, then this right here is an eight. And then it's one below the x axis. So when you go below the x axis, this is where y is zero down here. Y is negative one. Remember, there's an infinite number of points on a line. Those are just the numbers that come out to be nice integers. Nice numbers. They're not fractions. But hey, this one right here is on there. In other words, if I only went down one and a half and over two, what's half of three? Half of three is 1.5. What's half of negative four? Negative two, or negative 1.5. Go down 1.5 and then go to the right, two. It's on the left. But that point would be x is two. And the y value is one, two, three, right in the middle between three and four. Three point five. Or three. It's there. This is an infinite number of answers. These are just the nice ones. Now, what is supposed to happen with this answer? Let's just see this. These ordered pairs that are on my line. How do I know they work? They would solve the equation. That's what it is. Here's the deal. The reason why you graph. We're looking for all the x and y's that make this equation true. We want every single possible answer that I can plug in for x and y, where I multiply the x by 3 and then add multiply the y by 3. Add them together, and we get one. There's an infinite number of possible answers. So this four and the two should work. So you have 3x plus 4y equals 20, and 4 comma 2 is supposed to work. So that means let x equal 4, and the y is a 2. So plug in 4, and you got 4. Plus four times two. This is one. Well, that's eight. Twenty equals one. That point you just found makes the equation true. And you don't even need to do it like this. How about x is eight? What's three times eight? Three four. Y is negative one. What's four times negative one? Four times negative one is. So that means 24 minus 4 is actually 20. Yep. Because it's on one. That's how you know you get a deep beta the bus. The point that you found over here, when you put it in there, is that. First question on page six is our graph. And then the bonus question. It's like the disposal method. Everybody's eyes, 
I promise not to give you fractions today. I wanted to give you a taste of fractions to show you how this was done no matter what you have. On the test, this would be in. With a bonus on a test, bonus on a test. Find the equation of slope intercept form y to the next t on the line described if possible. If not possible, use the appropriate special case notation. It goes through the point, fractions get to the answers too. Equal opportunity or the points or pairs. It goes through the force pair, negative five points. Positive infinity. And then here is where we make the connection to what we did on uh, perpendicular. Perpendicular, I know that one. To the x step one, find the slope. Okay, do they give you the slope? No. Do they give you two order pairs so you can calculate the slope? No. But they say perpendicular. Now, perpendicular. And parallel. Parallel lines have equal slopes. Perpendicular are opposite and reciprocal. Opposite and reciprocal. I just thought of something. Students always struggle with this one because I'll tell you right now parallel perpendicular questions. They want to use Parallel lines. The slopes. Slopes. Parallel lines. That's what parallel lines look like. When the word parallel is a parallel, you know, two L's in a parallel. And if you, you know, turn those L's sideways, it just looks like an equal sign. Parallel lines have equal slopes. So if you know the slope of one line, that's the same slope as in the line of time. Perpendicular line. Does anybody remember? The symbol I told you last week for perpendicular. Upside down. Upside down. Two. So that upside down T is like, you know, the top of the X, a top of the Y axis intersecting the uh, X axis. And that's a special case because perpendicular lines are all, aren't always vertical and horizontal. So that's an example. Of but the slopes are opposite and reciprocal. So when you do perpendicular lines, the slopes are opposite and reciprocal. When you've got a change in the sign, it's one plus the other minus one minus the other plus, and then you've got to flip it. You've got to do two things. The perpendicular symbol, that upside down two. The first thing, opposite. So we've got perpendicular. It's well, the two things that make it this right here. They're going in opposite directions. One going straight up and down, the other one going left and right, going in opposite direction. That's got to stick in your head, opposite, perpendicular, opposite. And then you got to flip it, reciprocal. 
it looks like an upside down T. And that T dot here, so now it's flipped, it's upside down, it's a reciprocal. So it's opposite directions. Okay, that's what that looks like. One up and down, right? So the slopes are opposite, and the T dot flips upside down. So you've got to flip the fraction. So it means that one slope was positive four sevenths. Then the perpendicular slope, you have to change the sign, it's negative. And then you flip this seven over four. Opposite, positive is now negative, reciprocal equals correct. Going to be asked to do you know, parallel or perpendicular. If one slope is five, then the perpendicular slope that's a positive five, so that's a negative. My perpendicular is negative. What's the reciprocal of five? One over five. Good. Okay. Because remember, this is a fraction. It's actually five over one. What does five look like as a fraction? Five over one. So when you flip that fraction, it's one thing. Every whole number can be written as a fraction until one underneath. So we have slope that was equal to negative four. Then the perpendicular slope would be the positive four to positive and to positive one four. Because over here, this is negative four over positive one as a fraction. So opposite side, if that's negative, this is positive. And then you flip over a four, there's a one down here. So it's positive. So that'll be part of what we will also. Uh, emphasize Thursday and next week. If I'm going to test you on it next Thursday, it's only the new sheet for today. So this way. Step one, find the slope. I can't find the slope because I don't have two points and they don't tell me the slope. But it's perpendicular to the x axis. Well, the x axis, this right here, that's a seven eighths. Because the x axis is a horizontal line. The x axis is horizontal. And if you're parallel or perpendicular to a special case, then you are a special case. Parallel or perpendicular to a special case, then your line is going to be a special case. So this is definitely it's a special case. So then the actual work and the hint I gave you make the picture across here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to plot this point. So what quadrant? The first, the second, the third, and the fourth. What quadrant does that mean? Quadrant two, good. So negative five fourths, positive eight fifths. The reason why we go to quadrant two, this x is negative. So from the origin, it's going to go to the left. It's a negative, so you're going to go left. And that y is positive, so you can go up. You go to the left, five over four, and you go up five. Now, 
you don't have a grid on this problem to graph. I'm not asking that you graph it perfectly. All right, well, this way, you don't have to label these, you don't have to like count it out individually, you know, get real specific. You just need to know where to put it. And if I label this right here, negative five over four, positive three over five, then that's what it is. If I say my name is ready, guess what? My name is now ready. Look down there, change my name to four. My daughter and her husband are now Alan Esteban. Alyssa Alan Esteban, Ryan Alan Esteban, and I can name their name. Just gotta label. It doesn't matter. You're not, you just need to see the picture. And the reason why I want you to label it is because you need to know what to make the equation. What's going to help you vision? So, perpendicular, that makes a line at the intersect, it makes a line at the intersect. So, when I draw the line, I'm always going to do this one. Am I going to draw a forward bottom line? Or will I draw vertical? It's vertical. If it's perpendicular to this one, it has to intersect this one. And it has to make a right angle. That is what's being described in the box. It's a special case. It's what I told you last week. It's either x by itself or y by itself. When it's horizontal, if it's horizontal, capital H for horizontal, that's your cross bar H is from the horizontal line. But when you spell horizontal with the lower case, horizontal. Remember, the slope is zero. Can't spell horizontal without no. And when you write the equation for the right, the lowercase h kind of looks like, kind of, an upside down box. Let's try to make some kind of connection so you know which one to use. If you have a horizontal line, Horizontal, which is spelled with it, looks like an upside down y, and horizontal lines are just y equals something. There's no connection in the equation. And when we have vertical, okay, vertical, the slope is undefined. And what I told you when we went over this is undefined v and vertical v are right next to each other in the alphabet. They're right there next to each other. They go together. Undefined slope with the vertical axis. Zero slope or not can't spell that up. Vertical line. Has a constant x. That's a constant point in standard of vertical. That's the same thing. So x is equal to a point. There's no y in the problem. And what I told you last week to help you remember, the x is like pulling the x apart from top to bottom, and that top is a v. That helps you remember that it's X, but it's a vertical line, it's made of a V, and X is made of a V. I use X equals a number. When it's vertical, X equals a number. This is a vertical line. This right here is a vertical line. So it's going to be X equal to a constant. So in this graph, what does the X Oh, 
That's all you gotta do. The explanation is much more, you know, stressful than the uh, actual doing of the problem. But there's a way to figure it out if you can make the connection by which variable is going to be. I know what happens. People get it confused. But the y axis is up and down, and that one goes up and down, so it must be y. And that's the problem. The equation of the y axis right here, all of the x's are zero, no matter where you are, all of the x's are always zero. This might be zero four, this might be zero one, this might be zero and make two, that might be zero and make ten. This is zero zero. The y changes, but x is always zero. So the y axis, the equation of it, is x to zero. And the equation of the x axis is y to zero, because y is only zero in the And I don't want to say that because I don't want to memorize it, I want to know it. This is where I get in trouble. I don't mean trouble. I really want you to understand. And I need to get into this realm of over explaining. Some of you might say, tell me it's not true. It's not. But I just said almost an hour. What was the question? The question should take an hour. But I know, I know how. Anxiety, how much anxiety some you have coming into this. And I don't mean to be so intense that it makes you more mentally depressed. I mean, I mean to be intense out of, hey, you can do this. Find a way to make the connection to the beginning. This is what you know. So, what I just showed you is exactly what you're going to do at temper traffic. Right, the equation, but both of them. Same techniques I showed you here. Use your you know, warm up or whatever else you have to organize. That would be probably the same thing. Now, having practice, I don't know what to tell you. You have to do your own practice in order to master them. What do you think you're in a little trouble for them? I think it's important. Did I tell you the story about the one arm girl? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't get it. So, the best way to graph, we want y equals mx plus b. So, we have y, we have y equals 8x minus 5. So, we actually have our y equals mx plus our b. So, what's the slope of this line? It's an 8 and the y intercept. Is a negative five. So after this, So I'm going to graph it on here, but then that's by hand. And you should practice graphing by hand because that's what you got to do on quizzes and tests. But I, then I'll, I'll show you how to do it with the actual computer. So we first plot the y-intercept. It's on the y-axis. So at negative 5, which is right here. So here's 
Then one, two, three, then four. Here's negative five. Now on the homework, you can't label. On the tests and quizzes, you've got a label. There's negative five. Then we got to count the slope. Slope gets us to the next point. But we need a fraction. We need rise over run. We need to know how many up and how many left or right. How many down, how many left or right. So what is eight as a fraction? Eight over one. The integer eight is actually a fraction, eight over one. Whenever you have a whole number like this, and you need a fraction so you can do rise over run, you can just put a one in the denominator. So the rise is eight, and the run is one to the right. So from here, we go up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you go to the right one. Up eight and over one. You got to label it because it's in the quadrant. So you got to label it with the X and Y on a quiz or a test. You can't do it on the, on the homework. So what is the ordered pair for that point right there? X is one, and what's the Y? Three. That point is at one, three. That is a three. So it goes to this point and that point, you take a straight edge and you draw your straight line right through those and don't take your arrows. That's what's gonna end up looking like. To do this on the homework, you can enlarge the graph over here on the left or you can just enlarge it right here. And here's the tools. I want to make a line. This is the line tool. That's an absolute value graph. We're going to use that when we get to chapter eight and nine. Parabolas, chapter eight and nine. Sideways parabolas, we're not going to worry about that one yet. To graph a circle. And when we get to chapter nine, we're going to use the pink can. Solid line versus dash line. We'll do that in chapter nine as well. We just want to make a straight line. So right now we click on the line tool and it even says line tool when you put the cursor on. So the line tool. Just like you graphed it by hand, you got to plot two points. And the directions, let me down just a bit. It prompts you. It won't go down any further. It prompts you click the graph to plot your first point on the line. Click the graph, plot your first point. So the first point that we made was at negative five, right here. So I click on the line tool, that bring it over to the graph. Now you can see that as I move it around, especially up here, it's telling me exactly where I am on the grid. Right now, that little point that I'm dragging around is exactly at negative two, positive two in the graph. So right here at zero, negative five. And then you click. Now, through one point, you can make an infinite number of lines negative slopes, positive slopes, horizontal lines, vertical lines. In order to make a single line, you need two points. So then we got to click, it says right here at the top, click the graph to plot your second point. So we went to one, three. In other words, we went a rise of eight, we went up eight. So from negative five, we go up eight, and that takes us to positive three, and then a run of one. So the ordered pair, whoops, up eight, eight. We should be at one, three. Okay. 
Okay. Then you hit save. And my line and their line basically are right on top of each other. So I know I graphed it by hand. Right. Now you won't be able to do that because you'd have to be able to project the you know problem onto your paper and see if it matches up. But the bottom line, I just wanted to show you graphing by hand is what you need to be able to do. And then we hit check answer. Fantastic. Next question. That was 27. We're doing 20. Yeah, 29. I the wrong glass. I the wrong glass on all this. Okay, 29 is vexing for many people. Y equals 4X. And that's all it is, 4X. Because you try to match up with the Y equals MX plus B. The M is always in front of the X coefficient of X. So what's the slope of this line? Four, and as a fraction for rise of a run, four over a one. But the y intercept comes afterward. It's the constant that's right here after your x. So what is right here when you don't see anything? Or let's say when you see nothing, what represents nothing? Zero. The y intercept that you don't see would be a plus zero if you don't have a number after your x. It goes through a y-intercept of zero, which means the y-intercept of zero on the y-axis is right there at the origin. So if you don't have, a, you know, you don't see a constant, a plus b, it's going through the origin. Now I told you if it wasn't last week, it was the first week. The origin is the only point I don't need you, you don't need to label at all. Because labeling zero, zero just gets a little messy. And then which one should you label? If you're gonna label one point, you label zero for the X or should you label zero for the, you don't have to label it at all. It just gets a little messy because we just wanna have a neat graph. Everybody should know it's zero, zero. Okay. If you do label it, as long as you label it correctly, you're not going to lose it. And then the slope is four over one. So the rise is four. You go up four and the run is one. So you go up four and over one. And that point right there, the ordered pair is X is one. And the Y coordinate is a four. You went up four and write one, and sometimes students will write. They'll put it backwards and they'll go, hey, I did four first and then one second, so I'll put four first and one second. Remember, you're not labeling the slope as your ordered pair. It's the coordinate. Okay, real quick. When I give you the review sheet, can you see this handy dandy little review sheet? And as I told you, on the review sheet, on the back are all the answers. Now, it'll look better than this, I promise. But on the back, all of the answers. And you only need to label two points, like if you think. But I have more than two points labeled on those problems. So the students come back. I didn't get all those points. Yeah, you don't have to. You just need to. But I didn't have all. Well, not everybody's always going to come up with the same points. So you just need to have any of those two. You could have these two. You can have the origin of that one, the origin of this one, the origin of that one. You could have these two. You could have. You know, any combination of those two makes the line. 
but I try to label more than two because again, not everybody always comes up with the same answer, but if there's more than one answer on the graph that works. Okay, so I'll try not to panic. You know, for instance, there's enough room. If you go up four more and over one, it's also going to go through two eight. If you went down four, so a slope, if you went negative four and negative one, because that's still positive four, a negative over negative is positive. If you go down four, because it's negative, and left one, because negative one in the denominator, that's still going to be on the line. That would be negative one, negative four. All of those. I go on. Okay. We're going to click on our first point. The first point I'm going to use is the origin and it went to zero. And then I'm going to go up four and right one. Up there, I hit save, and then right there, try on top of each other, check minus. Okay, 31 is a lot like a quiz today. The problem is given in standard form. The equation is written in standard form, so you want to put it in slope intercept. 2x minus 3y equals 6. And the best way to graph it is to rewrite it y equals mx plus b. So to get this y by itself, you have to undo this positive 2x. You subtract 2x from both sides. And you got to remember, this is a negative 3y. Bring the negative down. Negative 3y equals, on the right side, you have a negative 2x and a positive 6. And then to get y by itself, you have to divide by negative 3. And if you divide one term by negative 3, Everybody gets divided by negative three. So that gives us positive y equals negative over negative is a positive. So this is going to be a positive two thirds times x. A positive over a negative is going to be a negative. Six divided by three is two. So the slope is a two thirds, and the y intercept is negative two. Just like your quiz. So the first point we plot and label is here at negative two on the graph. And the slope is two thirds. So you go up two and over three, and it's on the x-axis. So if we were gonna label this, you could just get away with just one k. This point is just negative two, and that point we just label with the three, because they're on the axis, not using the word pair. Three, two. Okay. And I know I probably don't need to do this one, but I'm doing this one because, yes, I want you to realize it's that simple. A lot of students will look at it as just like a trick question. The answer is no. They want the equation of the line with the given slope m. They give you the slope m. 
and they give you the y-intercept b, the given slope and the given y-intercept. So we are told n equals four and b is a five. The equation is simplify the answer, type your answer in slope intercept form, which is y equals m x slope plus b, y intercept, slope intercept form. So they want their answer just like I want my answer on test and quiz. Well, here's the deal. When you want this, you're supposed to just figure out the m and the b and complete the puzzle and plug them in. Well, they, they just gave it to us. So all you got to do is go, okay. M is a four, so four, don't yeah, four times the x. And then plus b, b is a five, so plus five. That's, that's it. It's not your question. They gave you everything you needed to know. So y equals four x. Yeah. So, Three, three. Same deal. They give us the slope and the b. Slope is one eighth and b equals zero. We want y equals mx plus b. So let's plug in what we know. They gave us everything. So y equals one eighth x b is a zero plus zero. Now, the directions and my directions. Simplify your answer. If you left that on a test or a quiz, you'd lose a point because it's not simplified. Because if you left, let's say, like, you know, five, what's five plus zero? You wouldn't leave five plus zero. You would actually figure that out. Hey, the answer that is simplified is a five. You wouldn't leave five plus zero. You would just leave what's the simplest answer form of that five. You wouldn't leave one eighth x plus zero. One eighth x plus zero is just one eighth x. Now I'm going to check to see if the homework is as picky as I am. So y equals one over eight times x plus zero. They are wrong. That is not simplified. They are absolutely totally wrong. Now, if you type it in, you're gonna get a pat on the back. They shouldn't be patting you on the back, that is wrong. At least it's going to lose a point when you turn, you know, you turn that in on a test or a quiz. Got to be simplified. One eighth x plus zero is just one eighth x. Same thing with this one. This one, they do the switcheroo. Over here, they give you a slope with a y-intercept of zero. On this one, this is number 34. They tell us the slope is zero and the y-intercept is negative 13. So again, we're trying to complete the puzzle, mx plus b. So zero is m, y equals zero times x, and then plus negative 13. If you leave it like that, it's not simplified. There's two things wrong with it. The first major thing is this, y equals zero x plus a negative is just minus 13. The second thing that's wrong with it is zero times x, zero times x is just zero minus 13. So zero minus 13 is negative 13. That's your answer, simplify. 
Now, here's my question. What kind of line has a slope of zero? Horizontal. And when you write the equation of a line that's horizontal, horizontal is a special case. Is it X or is it Y by itself? It's Y by itself. Because when you plug the slope in, the slope is zero, you lose the X that's in the equation. So you just end up with Y equals the constant. All the time, every time. But this time they better not let you get away with Y equals zero X minus 13. They better not let you get away with that. <laughs> it is wrong. It's not simplified. Because the goal is to get you to recognize horizontal versus vertical lines and how simple a horizontal line vertical line can be written if you know which one is written. That's the point. That's the point. Oh, the piercing. 34, 36. Okay. 36, multiple choice. I will not ask you a question like this on your test, but I wanted to give it to you as homework because eventually, if you go beyond this class, you will see questions that do this. They want the answer in standard form, AX plus BY plus C. And they tell us the slope is negative one seven, and it goes to the point negative two zero. Now standard form, AX plus BY equals C, X and Y are on the left side together. And then you have a constant on the right. Over here, x and y on the left, x and y on the left, x and y on the left. And then you just have a constant, a number on the right. Here's how we get there. Same way we did all the other problems. Find the slope. Hey, there it is. Special case? No, it's not zero. Not zero. So then we write down y equals mx plus b. And then we plug in the slope. So we're already at step four. Negative one seven times x, and then I just got to figure out b. To figure out b, we got to solve for. We got to plug some. We got to plug something in for x and y. So you want to pick an x and y that you can plug in. Well, the only x and y we have is that one. That's the only one that's on the line. You got to use it for something. So X is a negative two and Y equals zero. So going in for Y is zero equals negative one seven times X is negative two and then plus B because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Zero equals a negative times a negative is a positive, and then one over seven, and this would be two over one. One over seven times two over one is positive two over seven plus b. And then we'll solve for b. All you have to do, because the only thing that's happening is you're adding two sevens to it. Just subtract two sevens from both sides. Zero minus two sevens is negative two over seven. That should be. So this missing y intercept is a negative two sevens. Y equals negative one seven times x, and then that's a negative two sevens minus two over seven. So, multiple choice, and then here's where you're going to see how this happens. Okay. None of these choices over here have any fractions in them. 
So that's actually going to be good practice. For us. No fractions. My answer there is no fractions. So here's the good news. When you're solving an equation and you have fractions and people hate fractions, I don't know why they didn't do it again. You can undo the fractions in an equation. All you have to do to undo a fraction is multiply every term by the least common denominator of all those fractions. I know this said something like you know, what? Your fractions, the denominator means division. If it's in the denominator, if you're dividing by that number. To undo division, you multiply. Now, who's causing all the trouble over here? Well, we got divided by sevens. If you want to undo those, we got to multiply by seven. That will undo those denominators. If you multiply one thing by seven, you got to multiply everybody by seven. It's like being at the last Oprah show. You get a car, you get a car, you, if you get to multiply seven, you multiply by seven. Everybody gets multiplied by seven. If I multiply everybody by a seven, the fractions will divide. Seven times one equals a positive times a negative. Going to be a negative. The seven over seven reduces. Seven divided by seven is one. It reduces. It, do you want to use a colloquialism? Collo you want to use common language? It cancels out. Seven over seven cancels. So I'm left with negative one times x, negative x. And then over here, minus two over seven times seven, the sevens reduce. So this is just two times one, which is just two. Because when that reduces, seven goes into seven one, seven goes into seven one, two times one is a two. No more fractions. No more fractions. Still not done because the directions say final answer in standard form X and Y are on the left side, constant on the right. Well, here's Y on the left. I have this X on the right. I got to bring this X over to the left. How would I undo a negative X and bring it over to the left? Add x to both sides. You would add x. So that's a positive x. That's a positive 7y. So plus 7y equals, I'm still left with a negative 2. So I end up with x plus 7y equals negative 2 in standard form. Well, there's 7x plus 1y. That's not it. There's 2x. No, that's not it. Two x plus that's not it. X plus seven y equals negative two. Now, here's why I do what I do. On your tests and quizzes, I will always ask you to write your final answer in slope-intercept form. I want why is the mental speed? I won't ask you to put it in the standard. Here's why. That's the answer. This is also the answer. Negative x minus 7y equals positive. This would also be the answer. 2x plus 14y equals negative 4. This would also be an answer. 5x plus 35y equals negative 10. This is the this is a correct answer for that problem. This is a correct answer for the problem. This is a correct answer. There's an infinite number of ways that you could write the correct answer in standard form. And if I ask for the test, hey, write it in standard form, I have to go through an infinite number of possible, not an infinite, but I might have to go through 20 possible correct answers. And I don't want to do that. When you do slope intercept form and you get y by itself, one answer. Your final answer is the one final answer the same way, no matter what. Makes it a lot easier to grade.
and you do it step by step. The steps I show you how to do the problem, you're done. You don't have to do all this, get X and Y on one side and all that. Okay. All right. Four, six. That was the six. So. I will do the rest of them on Thursday because there's only a couple left. If you have questions, Thursday would be the time to ask. But it is your quiz time. And again, open note. Open whatever you want to have open. Make sure you have a straight edge. If you want to have a calculator, that's fine. Um, this is how, also how I'm taking roll. So if I don't get a quiz from you, you want here. Write your first and last name legibly. Because remember, I have multiple people with the same possible first name. Might have multiple people to do with the same last name. So please write your first and last name legibly. And then uh, make sure you show your work. Because if you have the wrong answer, you still might get some credit because of the work. Okay. If you have a question, come on up and ask. Don't raise your hand and have me go over there because then I'll be up all you know all day long going to everybody. Come on up and ask, and then I'll answer whatever. You I cannot tell you whether you're right or wrong. I can't grade it while you take it, but I might be able to steer you in a different direction if I think I need to. Okay. And when you're done, just bring it on up, turn it in, and you can go. This is my cardio. I'm going to pass out. Then we're going to see that. Not sure. And from behind, from behind, right? Over the shoulder. Oh, sure.